Hello everybody and welcome to Central Football Referees Online Referee Development Session number one. My name is Anthony Rowe and I am the Referee Manager at Central Football. We thought we'd take this opportunity to develop online learning modules for our referees within the Central Football Federation to be able to stay in tune with the game and their passion that is refereeing. Today, we will provide an update on football and COVID-19. I will go through how to set your availability and comment for when the season is ready to go. We'll do a quick quiz on the laws of the game for 2019 and 2020. And I'll cover off a little bit around Law 12, fouls and misconducts. To get started, let's provide an update on football and COVID-19. As I know you are all aware, the New Zealand government has implemented a state of emergency for New Zealand and listed the COVID-19 alert status at level 4. This primarily instructs us all to remain at home. Prior to the alert announcement, New Zealand Football and Central Football announced a suspension to all competitive matches until May the 2nd, 2020 and trainings until April the 18th, 2020. As I'm sure you'll all appreciate, those dates may well be not quite as accurate as, the, as what they were at the time. We will keep you posted. During this time, we encourage you to stay healthy. Include physical activity as part of your daily routines and sneak into football referee related intellectual material also to stay connected with your passion. Last week I sent out some videos which showed 11 plus activities which you can do in your home and either by yourself or with your family. Thanks to Nick Chong for putting these together for us. Here's a great chance to make use of that material. Let's move into comment. To access comment, you will need to head to the website comment.oceaniafootball.com forward slash login. Once you are on this login page, enter your login credentials. A lot of referees, you will already have this. This is the same login credentials as your My Comment, where you register for courses and for the season. If you are unsure of your login, username and password, please send an email to me, anthony at centralfootball.co.nz and I'll look to get into setting up your credentials for you so you can access this program. Once you're logged in, you'll come to a page that looks a little bit like this. Head over to the Referees and Officials tab, which is a drop down box, and click on Availability. Once you are inside the availability module, you'll need to use the scroll down bar on the right hand side and come right down to the bottom. After doing this, you'll find the add button on the left hand side. So to put in a new unavail unavailability record, press add. Click the drop down box and choose referee or referee assessor, dependent on which role that you have within central football. Start typing your name in the person box, and once you have typed a few letters of your name and it shows, click on your name in the drop down box. Press unavailable and put in the dates in which you wish to tell us that you are unavailable for appointment. This might be one day, this might be a range of days. You may have shift work, you may have injury. So there's the option to give us a quick reason as to why you are not available for appointment. Myself and referee appointers throughout the region will look to check this availability seven days out from a match day. So please enter your unavailability as soon as possible and this will allow us to keep up to date with who we can appoint to matches and who we cannot. Once you've entered your information you can press save and we'll now show you a way to check that your record's been saved. After pressing save, you return to the screen. Enter in the dates in which you said you are unavailable and press search. Your screen will show many unavailability 
listings and a lot of referees from around the country. So to find your one, head to the official search box and start typing your name. Once you start typing your name, your unavailability record will show as this one does here. Shows your name, your official type, shows you're unavailable and what dates you put in that you're unavailable from. And that little description that you decided to put in to let us know how you're going. Again, I need to reiterate that it's really important that you enter your availability. If you are unavailable, put the dates in as early as possible so that the referee appointers in your regions and myself can make good use of time in appointing the right officials to the right matches. If you have any further questions on this, please do not hesitate to drop me an email, anthony at centralfootball.co.nz. Let's move on. Now's the chance to test your laws of the game knowledge. Here we will complete 10 multi-choice questions. They will be covering the laws of the game 2019-2020. Questions will be read out and displayed on the screen and I'll allow approximately 30 seconds for you to answer the question. You'll need your own piece of paper and a pen and number 1 to 10. There'll be four possible answers for each question and listed A, B, C or D. Write down the answer that you think best fits the question. I'll provide the answers at the end of the 10 questions and you can treat yourself, but only if you get 10 out of 10. So make sure you locate the chocolate box in the pantry so that it's right there so you can celebrate your success for getting 10 out of 10. Let's get started. Question one. At the coin toss, the captain of the team that wins the toss has what options available to them? A. Take the kickoff. B. Choice of ends to attack for the first half. C. To take the kickoff and the choice of ends to attack for the first half. Or D. To take the kickoff or the choice of ends for the first half. Write down your answer now. Question. The referee orders a penalty kick to be retaken because the goalkeeper moves forward from his goal line. May a different player take the retaken penalty kick? A. Yes, if identified. B. No. C. Yes, with the permission of the opposing captain. Or D. No, unless the kicker is injured. Write down your answer now. Question number The assistant referee indicates that the board has gone out of play after an attacker kicked it out. After the flag signal, a defender strikes an opponent with his fist using excessive force. What decision should the referee make? A. The referee sends off the defender for violent conduct and restarts with a penalty kick. B. The ball was out of play. The referee sends off the defender for violent conduct and play is restarted with a throw-in, goal kick or corner kick. C. The referee decides the ball is out of play, sends off the defender for serious foul play, and play is restarted with a throw-in, goal kick, or corner kick. D. None of the previous answers are correct. Write your answer down now. Question 4. The ball hits the referee and does not change position, but the team that was in possession of the ball have had an attack created. 
what must the referee do? A. Allow play to continue. B. Stop the match and restart with a drop ball to the team originally in position from the position they last played the ball. C. Stop the match and restart with a drop ball to the team originally in position from the position that it hit the referee. D. Stop the match and restart play with an indirect free kick. Write down your answer now. Question. There is an offside offence if the player in an offside position receives the ball directly from A. Throw in B. Corner kick C. Indirect free kick D. Goal kick Answer now. Question. A red team defender commits a holding offence on the blue team attacker which starts outside the penalty area and continues inside the penalty area. The foul denies the blue player an obvious goal scoring opportunity. What should the referee do? A. Award a direct free kick to the blue team and a caution to the red team player. B. Award a penalty kick to the blue team and a caution to the red team player. C. Award a direct free kick to the blue team and send off the red team player. D. Award a penalty kick to the blue team and send off the red team player. Answer now. Question. An attacker is carelessly fouled by a defender in the defensive penalty area. A penalty kick is awarded and no card is shown. The attacker receives medical treatment and then wants to take the penalty kick. What does the referee decide? A. Allow the attacker to take the penalty kick. B. The attacker must leave the field of play due to receiving treatment. C. The attacker can nominate another player from his team to take the penalty kick. Or D, the attacker may stay on the field of play whether they take the penalty or not. Record your answer now. Question. A corner kick is kicked in front of the goal. It accidentally touches the arm of an attacking player, which is held in natural position. After that, a teammate receives the ball and scores. What does the referee decide? A. Allows the goal. B. Stop play and award a direct free kick to the defensive team. C. Stop play and award an indirect free kick to the defensive team. D. Award a goal kick. Answer now. Question 9. A goalkeeper picks up a deliberate back pass from his teammate's leg inside the goal area. What do you decide? Stop play and award a penalty kick. Stop play and award an indirect free kick. Allow play to continue. Stop play and award an indirect free kick and caution the goalkeeper. Record your answer.
Question. The referee is always required to raise his hand for an indirect free kick, but can later lower before the indirect free kick is taken if it's an offside. B. The ball touches another player and goes out of play. C. The ball has been kicked by a defender. D. There is not a chance of a goal being scored directly from the free kick. Record your answer now. Okay, there's your 10 questions. Get ready to mark your answers. You can either mark your own or perhaps find someone else in the household that will mark it for you. Let's get those answers. Answer to number one. At the coin toss, the captain of the team that wins the toss has the options available to them. And the answer is D, to take the kickoff or the choice of ends to attack for the first half. Question two. The referee orders a penalty kick to be retaken because the goalkeeper moves forward from his goal line. May a different player take the retaken penalty kick? The answer is A. Yes. As long as the new penalty kick taker is identified before the retaken penalty kick. Question 3. The assistant referee indicates that the ball has gone out of play after an attacker kicked it out. After the flag signal, a defender strikes an opponent with his fist using excessive force. What decision should the referee make? The answer is B. The ball was out of play. The referee sends off the defender for violent conduct and players restarted with a throw-in, goal kick or corner kick, depending on whatever the restart would have been. 4. The ball hits the referee and does not change position, but the team that was in position of the ball have had an attack created. What must the referee do? The answer is C. To stop the match and restart with a drop ball to the team originally in position from the position that it hit the referee. This is one of the new changes for 2019-2020. Question 5. There is an offside offence if the player in an offside position receives the ball directly from. An indirect free kick? The answer is C. Remember, you cannot be offside from a throw-in, corner kick, or goal kick. That's five questions down. I wonder who's five out of five at the moment. Let's try the answer to six. A red team defender commits a holding offence on the blue team's attacker, which starts outside the penalty area and continues inside the penalty area. The foul denies the blue player an obvious goal scoring opportunity. What should the referee do? The answer is D. Award a penalty kick to the blue team and send off the red team player. Here, the foul, holding, starts outside and continues inside, so we must penalise when it's inside the penalty area with a penalty kick. The foul type of holding is not a genuine attempt for a defender to play the ball. Therefore, they should be shown a red card for denying an obvious goal scoring opportunity. Answer D. Question. An attacker is carelessly fouled by a defender in the defensive penalty area. A penalty kick is awarded and no card is shown. The attacker receives medical treatment and then wants to take the penalty kick. What does the referee decide? The answer is A. Allow the attacker to take the penalty kick. Again, this is a new change for 2019-2020. And it removes the unfairness of a player that has been fouled and needs medical treatment and not, them not being able to take a penalty kick because they have to leave the field of play. So, the change is that even though the players receive treatment on the field of play, they are allowed to stay on the field of play, but to take the penalty kick only. Answer A. Question 8. A corner kick is kicked in front of goal. It accidentally touches the arm of an attacking player, which is held in a natural position. After that, a teammate receives the ball and scores. What does the referee decide? The answer is B. The referee must stop play and award a direct free kick to the defensive team for handball. Even though the arm was in a natural position and the ball accidentally touches the arm of an attacker, the attacker's teammate has scored a goal after the fact. So this must now be penalised with a direct free kick because it leads to an attacking opportunity or in this case a goal being scored. We will do handball as a module moving through the season. but 
this is a good taste tester for you to try and understand the changes in this part of the law. Number nine, the goalkeeper picks up a deliberate back pass from his teammate's leg inside the goal area. What do you decide? The referee must allow play to continue. It is only an offence for a goalkeeper to pick up the ball with his hands or control with their hands after they've received the ball deliberately kicked to them from the foot of a teammate. In this case, the ball has been played by the leg. The answer is C. Allow play to continue. Alright, for those that are 9 out of 9, let's see if you can access the treat chocolate box for 10 out of 10. Here's the answer to number 10. The referee is always required to raise his hand for an indirect free kick, but can later lower before the indirect free kick is taken if the answer is D. There is not a chance of a goal being scored directly from the free kick. Many years of coaching has said that the referee must keep their hand raised for an indirect free kick until the ball touches another player. This has become unnatural for the referee to run, and it's quite awkward for them to keep their hand raised for such a long period of time. So now, if there is no chance of a goal being scored directly from the free kick, the referee simply raises their hand at the time of blowing the whistle and then drops the hand from there on during the process. If there is a chance for a goal being scored, then the normal old procedure applies of keeping the hand raised until the ball is touched by another player. How well did you go? Did you get 10 out of 10 this time? Let's write down your answer and your scores so you know which questions to go back to in this video. And perhaps you'll do a better job in our next quiz coming up in the next modules. Keep checking the laws of the game. They are accessible on the iFab website. And also there's a great app for you to use. So stay up to play with those questions that you didn't quite get right. Let's have a look at Law 12, Fouls and Misconducts. As referees, we are asked to make decisions throughout the game, and one of our key decisions is, was there fair or foul contact? For us to be best placed to be able to make that decision, we must understand the foul types that the laws of the game ask us to make decisions on. What I'd like you to do now is pause this video and list the seven direct free kick offences which can be completed in a careless, reckless or excessive force manner. Press pause now and write down your seven direct free kick offences. How'd you go? Did you get all seven? Let's have a look. Charges. Jumps at. Kicks or attempts to kick. Pushes. Strikes or attempts to strike, including a headbutt. Tackles or challenges. Trips or attempts to trip. These are your seven direct free kick offences which can be completed in a careless, reckless or excessive force manner. Did you get them all? Check out FIFA Laws of the Game, page 103, if you need to get some more information on this topic. Of course, these aren't the only seven direct free kick offences. There are five other direct free kick offences. Again, press pause on this video, write down the other five, and press play to check to see how you went on. Do this now. Let's see if you got these other five. Handball. Holding an opponent. Impedes the progress of an opponent with contact. Note the with contact part, this makes it a direct free kick offence. Bites or spits at someone. Throws an object at the ball, an opponent or a match official, or makes contact with the ball with a held object. For example, this might be throwing a shin guard at the ball. This would be a direct free kick offence. Hope you got all five of those down. There are some obvious ones and some harder ones. So again, take some time to check out the laws of the game to understand these five additional offences. Once we have decided on the foul type, as referees, we now need to decide the severity of the foul. There are three categories, careless, reckless, and excessive force. Let's check your understanding of the definitions in the laws of the game. Again, pause this video, take some time to see if you can write the exact wording for the def definition of careless. Let's do this now.
Did you get every word written down? Here's the definition. Careless is when a player shows a lack of attention or consideration when making a challenge or acts without precaution. No disciplinary sanction is needed. So in the case where there is a foul that is a, one of the seven direct free kick offences that can be done in a careless, reckless or excessive force, for example, tripping an opponent, this would be a direct free kick only. No disciplinary sanction. Let's try the next one. Can you write down the reckless definition? Pause your video, write down it word for word from the laws of the game, and press play when you're done. Reckless is when a player acts with disregard to the danger to or consequences for an opponent and must be cautioned. So in this situation, when you decide a foul is reckless, for example pushing or maybe charging, then you need to decide if it is reckless. Did the player act with disregard to the danger or the consequences for an opponent? If the player did, then the direct free kick must be given and a yellow card shown to caution the player for their behaviour. Definition of excessive force. Again, pause the video. Let's see if you can get this one word for word out of the laws of the game. Press play when you're done. Using excessive force is when a player exceeds the necessary force and or endangers the safety of an opponent. If a player does this, they must be sent off and shown the red card. Excessive force is generally seen in a manner where a player is tackling an opponent. If they use excessive force and endanger the safety, then a direct free kick is given for tackling an opponent and a red card is shown for serious foul play and the player is sent from the field of play. That sort of a, on that severity of foul is found on page 103 of the laws of the game. For us to decide whether a foul is careless, reckless or excessive, we have some definitions, but we also must use some considerations to help us get to those definitions. Here are some ideas. Speed of the challenge, slow, medium or fast. Force of the challenge, low, medium or high. What part of the body was used to make the challenge? The sole of the foot? Was it the elbow? Or perhaps it was leg on leg contact? Where on the body was the contact? Top of the foot? Was it on the shin? Perhaps it was an elbow to an head? What direction was the challenge made from? The side? Was it in front or behind? And was there an opportunity to play the ball? Yes or no? These are all considerations that you can take into play when looking at any challenge on the field of play. For one, to decide if it's fair or foul. And two, if it was foul, then was it a careless, reckless or excessive force type foul. Therefore, no sanction needed, a yellow card or a red card after a direct free kick is awarded. Let's have a look at some videos and see how we get on. At times, I'll pause the videos to see if you make one decision, and then when I show a different angle of video, perhaps you'll change your mind. But use these considerations to get to where you need to be. Video number one. Here's your first look at the clip. What considerations are you using to make your decision? And what decision have you come to? Is this tackle careless? Therefore, direct free kick, no sanction. Is it reckless? Direct free kick, yellow card. Or perhaps this tackle endangers the safety of your opponent and uses excessive force. Therefore, direct free kick, red card. Here you see the player jumping into the challenge, red number 15. At this point in time, both feet are off the ground and the board is between two players. The player slides and makes contact with the opponent. These types of challenges where the board is between two players really needs to lift the alertness of the referee. 
so they are ready for whatever decision may come. In this situation, the red player uses his right leg to play the ball. However, using the left sliding leg, there is contact between the shin of the red player and the shin of the green player. The speed of the challenge is medium to high, but the force is medium due to the contact of shin on shin contact. So in this situation, the expected decision is a direct free kick and a yellow card for a reckless tackle by red player number 15. Was that the situation that you came to at the start? Is that what you saw? Feel free to rewind the video and have another look to see where point of contact is made. These are examples on how we can start with one decision and change to another when we see different views. Let's have a look at another challenge. In this situation, again, the ball is between two players. Vardy, who we have both players jumping to the jump. the extra time. And who Both players agree to Which of those two parties was the guiltier? Well, actually left a bit on Barrios. Who fouls who? Who plays the ball? Was the ball there to be played? So here you'll see where I pause the video. Red number 18 tackles his opponent in a manner where they've used their studs on the lower part of the leg to the top of the foot. The ball is there to be challenged and yellow number five plays the ball. A lot on Barrios. Let's just have a quick look at the position of the referee in this clip. Achieving the best view is vital, and here the referee has good proximity to the decision and has a great view between two players and the ball. Now let's look at the security of the foul. Arias with the clearance, back by Young, here's Vardy, who may appreciate the extra time. And who, which of those two parties... As mentioned earlier, Red 18 uses his studs to challenge his opponent. The ball is there to be challenged, and the speed of the challenge is quite slow, medium to slow paced. However, the force of the challenge is medium, due to the nature of the studs and the sole of the foot being used. The contact is glancing on the bottom of the shin down towards the foot. In this case, the, the Red 18 has shown a disregard for the safety for or the consequences of his challenge. Therefore, a direct free kick and yellow card would be the correct outcome for this type of challenge. Is that the decision that you came to? Feel free to pause, rewind and play again and see what decisions you would make if you saw this on the field of play. Let's look at our third and final clip. I'm going to stop and start this one to see whether your decision changes throughout the clip. Was there a foul? Did white number eight foul the player wearing the red and black jersey? On this view, it's difficult to see. Did you decide fair or foul? Now let's have another look. Have you changed your mind?
Was this challenge fair or foul? What was the type of challenge that you saw? Now let's look at the challenge in full and see what we can see. Here we see the challenge paused at the point of contact. The player wearing the white jersey uses his studs to the mid part of the leg of the player wearing the red and black jersey number 42. The point of contact is in the middle of the shin and is sliding down the leg with full force contact from the sole of the foot. The level of speed of the challenge is medium, the level of force of challenge is medium to high, and the downward nature of the challenge shows malice and brutality. The board has already been played by red number 42, and white number 8 continues with their challenge, endangering the safety of the opponent and using excessive force. A direct free kick is the correct restart, and the player should be shown a red card and sent from the field of play for serious foul play. A tackle which endangers the safety of the opponent and uses excessive force. These types of challenges are ones that cause serious injury to players and prevent them from carrying out the rest of the match and future matches throughout a season. Referees must be alert to this type of play and show urgency and intensity in getting the best angle of view to make correct decisions in this situation. Did you get the red card outcome? Is that what you saw? Do you think that's what the referees saw during this match? The referee's urgency is not quite as high as what it could be. There is some whistle and some movement. Perhaps the fourth official could have been assistance here to make this decision. This clip demonstrates that the best angle of view is vital for referees to ensure they achieve the right outcome. When I saw this video for the first time, and on the first view, I thought this was a careless type foul. But of course, once seeing the last view, I've decided this is a tackle that endangers the safety of the opponent and uses excessive force. One of the top end poor tackles that we see throughout our game. So there you go, there's three clips. How did you go? Did you get three out of three? Again, the purpose of these videos is for you to pause, rewind, and play again. So feel free to do this over the next period of time. And if you have any questions or queries, please drop me a line, anthony at centralfootball.co.nz. We know that these times are unprecedented, and we will continue to create online learning opportunities for you as referees. Thank you for taking the time to invest in your refereeing passion. We look forward to creating the next online development for you. And if you have any topics you'd like to request, or questions, comments, please email me, anthony at centralfootball.co.nz. Namahi and kia kaha. Until next time.